If you thought that was cool, just wait until you see the video of the actual landing that I've made. Hey guys, I've been teasing this for a while because in the last two weeks I spent most of my time working on Perseverance rover using SLA printer. I have Creality LD002H printer that's been kindly sent to me by Banggood and you can find the link to this printer in the description. This is my first SLA or resin printer so it's hard for me to compare it to anything else because up until now I only used FMD printers mainly Ender 3 series you can watch the video about them here so I decided that I'm going to focus on actual my first impressions and we're going to talk what it takes to start with SLA printing and talk about hidden annoyances and hidden costs First time I came across resin printer was a couple of years ago at the Hackspace. That printer was probably twice as expensive with a half of the build volume. This Creality printer comes with quite impressive actually price because it's under $200 and the build volume which is 130 by 80 by 160 millimeters. If you wonder how much is it? Well, it's clearly enough to build the rover and this is what it's kind of sized against the more familiar maybe to you and the 3 series with 200 by 35 by 235 build volume and the Z axis of 250 millimeters. It's a perfect tabletop printer with the actual footprint just a slightly bigger than the VAT itself. Now, as any other printer in that price range, it comes with LCD display. This is 2K display at 2560 by 1620 resolution. Now, this LCD display is layered on top of the UV light, which uses 405 nanometer UV light to cure photosensitive resin. So this is a SLA printing in an essence and I have to say that this is a very simple printer to use. The leveling takes a couple of moments and once done it's pretty much set and forget and then all you have to do is just stick the USB drive into the printer with your printing design, press print and wait a couple of hours for the print to happen. While printing the printer isn't particularly loud either. You'll hear the noise of the fan, and that's pretty much it. And even the associated smell of resin it wasn't that terrible. I've used anacubic resin, and it is advised to use it in a ventilated area, so bear that in mind. But I didn't find the smell unpleasant, but your mileage may vary. I'm glad that Creality decided to include touchscreen display, because operating printer this way is so much quicker and easier. Now there is a small surprise. I've opened the side panel to investigate what kind of motherboard I've got inside. And then when I've noticed a very familiar 8-pin header. Do you know what else have an 8-pin header? Yeah, if you follow my channel you probably know this is ESP8260601. And to my surprise, once I slotted the ESP in, it was working perfectly. I mean, the chipset is powered, but the printer isn't equipped with Wi-Fi of the box, so that's probably gonna take some hacking and googling to make it work. I really hope we're gonna see a connected version of this printer, so you don't have to run around with a USB stick to transfer your designs. So what's so exciting about a resin printer? Obviously, it's the resolution and the details of the prints that you cannot really achieve on the traditional FMD printers. But first, let's take a closer look at what you can achieve with a printer like this. This was my first design printed on that printer. Granted, I didn't know what I was doing, so I used the default settings and let the printer roll with it. It turns out that it worked quite great. I was extremely satisfied with the finish and even though I did have to mask a couple of holes caused by me removing supports not carefully enough, I think it shows what the printer is capable of. 
Once I got a little bit of confidence, I started tweaking something. I decided to go with a smaller print, this time a small 6 cm tall design, which would probably be something that tabletop fans would be interested in. Unfortunately, if you are into tabletop figurines, you might be slightly disappointed as 2K display might not be enough to reflect all details in a print. As you can see, some of the fine details are missing in here, and yes, you could compensate with a nice paint job, but if you're looking for finer details, you probably want to look around for a 4K display instead. That character is 6 cm tall, and you can see the level of details between a molded aluminum printout from a Games Workshop and a printed figurine on the Creality printer. And I know what you want to see, it's the Perseverance rover. So, here are the pictures. As you can see, there is a plenty of details on that rover, and the rover is significantly bigger than the bed size. I've spent the last two weeks working on this project to make it happen, and I ended up with lots of fabulous pictures and a video of the landing. I'm going to have a follow-up video showing you behind the scenes and all challenges I had to overcome in order to make it happen, so if you want to know more, you best subscribe right now so you wouldn't miss it. I'm still new to SLA and I'm still learning, so even though the print isn't perfect, I'm super proud of it and I can't wait for my next project. I've mentioned before that SLA printing is all about perseverance and I didn't mean the rover itself. It's a much different process to FDM printing and you'll have to unlearn everything you know from the traditional filament-based printing. First, you have to master the art of orienting your prints to limit the number of islands that you'll have to support. You're gonna benefit from that because adding supports is a messy business. Yes, they are auto-generated supports, but they only work for uncomplicated prints and if you want to print something complex, you'll have to add supports manually or learn how to edit it. Adding too much support will result in print being very difficult to remove or release from supports, often risking a damage to the print itself. Not adding enough supports will result with parts being either distorted or not presented on the bed itself at all. While my first print came out okay, I had significant issues with my second one and I spent some time actually learning what works and what didn't and you'll spend some time doing the same mistakes, probably. Once your print is ready to go, it's the easy part. Just put the USB stick in and you're ready to go. A couple of hours later, you'll be happy looking at your print slowly emerging from the VAT. And this is where the messy part starts, because you have to time your print uh, correctly as well. Leaving the print unattended and ready will cause the uh, resin to cure and that will make your job of removing it from built platform and from supports much more difficult and increasing the risk of damaging the print itself. It's a wise idea to time your print so you'd have around an hour to spare when the print is over so you could save some of the resin uh, from the vat. I'm using 50-50% mix uh, in my prints, so 50% of the used resin and 50% of the new resin, but make sure you do that straight away after the print is complete to avoid that resin in a vat being cured. Both the vat and the print has to be washed with IPA alcohol, which is, let's face it, messy. I've started doing it in a sink and I quickly gave up this idea because the resin is difficult to wash off of different surfaces, especially when it gets cured with UV light from sunshine. This is something that is going to get you in trouble with your partner, so yeah, consider this in advance. When the printer is clean and your print is washed with alcohol, 
you can separate it from the print surface and remove supports. You will have to be extra careful because uh, removing support is a risky business and better you are at this, the less scars on your prints can be presented for later post-processing. It's a messy business because brittle fragments of resin is going to fly all over the room when you're using clippers to release your print. Yeah, expect another half an hour of cleanup, collecting bits and uh, making sure nothing is out there uncured. But once the print is released from support, you're ready to start the curing process. Let's talk about hidden costs, because printer alone isn't the only expense. It's a budget printer and it will set you around $200, which is for the most part alright. As I mentioned, I got in trouble for cleaning prints in my sink and I quickly realized that I could really benefit from a wash and curing station. Those aren't extremely expensive, but they add extra $150 to the cost of a printer already. And this is something you should bear in mind. On the plus side, they'll save you a lot of time, hassle and a mess, and your parts gonna be ready for painting and enjoying much quicker. So you should seriously consider one of these. The one I'm using, I'm going to also link in the video description. Another obvious cost to consider is obviously the resin itself. I've used Anycubic uh, resin and that's about 30 to 40 dollars for one liter and to be honest I went quicker through that than I was expecting. But that's not the only consumable. Next up is the film separating VAT from LCD screen. That film costs around 20 to 30 dollars for three to four sheets and they will last you only for about 100 to 150 hours of print time depending how careful you are with cleaning. Especially if your print fails, you're risking scratching the film while cleaning it. So make sure you spend extra time and be careful with the film to make it last much longer. Thankfully, IPA alcohol isn't terribly expensive and five liters of it's gonna set you back for about 20 to 30 dollars and it will pretty much last forever because you can reuse that stuff. The last thing you should consider is LCD display itself. The lifespan of it is anywhere between 2000 and 5000 hours of print time so sooner or later you might be facing another repair which is gonna set you back 30 to 50 dollars depending on the model of the printer you are using. And this is how we ramped up the price from $200 to nearly $500 and that changes how expensive the SLA printing it is to get into. Sure you can just get a printer but you'll end up getting a bit frustrating and making things more difficult to yourself. So if you are getting into SLA printing think about what you need and what you can live with. I'm going to finish this video with a short clip of a rover landing which I faked on Mars for your personal enjoyment. Accordion, which means we are conducting the sky crane, about to conduct the sky crane maneuver. Sky crane maneuver has started, about 20 meters off the surface. We're getting signals from M MRO. Tango Delta. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. Ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. And again, if you're interested in how this rover was made and what were the challenges I had to overcome, uh, keep your eyes peeled to the next video because I'm gonna talk about it in detail. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and you know I don't have a posting schedule so you best follow me on social media of your choice where you're gonna find more pictures from the photo shoot of the Perseverance rover. I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, bye!